All right, so let's get to, into creating some enemies. Now, just so that you know how enemies are spawned, they are spawned using uh, the finite or infinite spawner using waves. So, for example, let's have one wave over here and inside our prefabs demos folder, let's create a, a, a side wave. So, I'll go into create, shmob boss, waves, side spawnable waves. Let's call this one side one. And you'd see over here that this spawner uses waves and your enemies, which you will create from here, will go inside uh, that wave. And so again, to recap, a wave inside here and that wave an enemy will go inside. It's just once we create it, it will be more clear. So I'll go to edit, shmob boss, agents, and create simple mover enemy. And once I've created it, I just like the player, I just add a prefab to it. Changing its scale and just let's move it out of the way. So right now we have our player completely ready to be used. Just uh, our enemy, sorry. And just like the, the player, it has the same settings in addition to drop settings for pickups and some score and coins value. And you have a disabled settings. Let's uh, set its, its speed to three. And we'll get into those in a moment. And let's just use it inside a wave. Inside demo. I'm going to first make a prefab. And I'm going to drop it inside here. Let me rename it into simple one. Now, uh, names actually make a difference. So for example, if you have an enemy called simple one over here and in another folder you have the exact same name, the pool can't know the difference. So uh, I even have a message over here. So when, whenever you create an enemy, just make sure that it has different names so that when pooled, it's, uh, it's distinct. All right, so let me just drag and drop this one over here into enemy prefabs. And the settings are, are pretty straightforward. Just uh, to recap them quickly, the number of enemies who spawn, how many to spawn, let's spawn five. And is spawning in random enemies relates to if you have multiple prefabs. And time between enemies, let's put it one second. Um, is random time if you want them to be random. The depth index, as we have mentioned, is the uh, Z position value. Let's put it at 40. And it spawns from the top. The spawn offset determines how far from the play field it will spawn. If, if it's set at zero, it will spawn around this edge. If you set it at five, at, let's make it two, for example, it will spawn a little bit further so that it doesn't pop. And the spawn position in the center or around the edges, let's keep it in the center. Random spawn position controls, for example, um, if you want to spawn them randomly. I tell you what, let's spawn them randomly and make them spawn from 0.25 to 0.75. This means they'll spawn from this area. And that's it. Let's just put our wave over here and make it, for example, wait 10 seconds. And then the same wave will repeat just to make it uh, different. Okay, let me save. And play. So you see here we have, this is the first wave, which has five enemies, or yeah, five enemies. And then you, we, after 10 seconds, we have another wave spawned randomly. So just to recap the, these concepts, the finite spawner uses waves. These waves are created from as scriptable objects from right clicking over here. There are multiple types of waves depending on the mover of the uh, mover type of the enemy. And you create an enemy, a pref an enemy prefab, and you put it inside the wave. I, I know it's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit of work to do it, but uh, once you get used to the co concept, it's pretty simple. You see over here, th these are the type of waves we currently we've used uh, a side spawnable wave with a simple mover 
this wave can take multiple movers and that two other types are pretty straightforward a curve wave with a curve mover and the waypoint wave with a waypoint mover we'll just get into them in in the next tutorial